Welcome back to the Clone Wars. All clones, all the time. According to overexcited announcer, Anakin and Mace are getting a break from all the combat to watch some clone cadets get some much-needed training on board one of the Jedi cruisers. But the cadets are already giving shit to one of their own, a last-minute transfer who says that he didn't complete his run because he broke his arm. A real trooper could lose an arm, and still report for duty. Ah, but not if it's the army salutes with, though, huh? But one of them finally intervenes, getting the other cadets to back off and leave Lucky, as the new kid calls himself, alone. But let's get down to the important business. We've got to go and meet the big shot Jedi on the cruiser. Welcome aboard the Jedi cruiser Endurance. I am Mace Windu, and this is Anakin Skywalker. I've got this under control, Mace. <clears throat> Thirty years from now, when you're sitting by your fireside and your grandson is on your knee and he asks, What did you do in the Great Clone Wars? You can look him straight in the eye and say, Son... Your granddaddy rode with the Grand Army of the Republic and a son of a goddamn bitch named Anakin Skywalker. We'll rip those Sep's guts out and use it to grease our AT-ATs. Cadets are all amazed at this, except for Lucky, who's looking pretty pissed off, actually. But all too quick, it's off to do some practice firing. There's nothing more dangerous in all of space than a moving target. But since all things in space must be moving, really what I'm saying is everything is dangerous. Now, this is my ship and my rules. I do not allow tourists on board. Only soldiers. If I find any tourists, I'll read them my poetry and then throw them out the airlock. So the first cadet up tries to shoot, fails to hit the target, and then promptly gets kicked out of the chair. But I only... Oh no, you're done. You only get one chance. I promise you the separatists don't give more. But if I practice, maybe I'll... Nope, you failed. Send him down the chute to the grinder and process a new clone. Training is no match for experience, and it's the one thing none of you have. And obviously, as long as I'm in command, you'll never get any. But when Lucky gets thrown into the chair, he hits the target with just one volley. And when a simulation of an attack formation is launched, it's one shot, one kill again. This is definitely an unusual cadet, and we soon understand why as he slips away from the group and is revealed to be Boba Fett, and is working with the bounty hunter Aura Singh, as well as Bosk, actually. And we can quickly infer that he's here to get revenge on Mace Windu for killing Jango Fett. It was a plot point the third film never managed to address, so it's good to see the animated series picking it up and running with it. Boba Fett slips into Mace's quarters and rigs up a booby trap to go off when he enters, and right on time, because Mace is on his way there at that very moment. In fact, the only thing that stops him from entering the room is a clone showing up to tell him that Anakin wants him to come up to the bridge immediately. So the poor clone is the one that gets blown up instead. Boba Fett is mightily annoyed at this, naturally, because that means that now everybody is going to be on alert, so getting a second crack at his revenge isn't going to be easy. Especially because everyone is going to know that Mace was the intended target soon enough. You're lucky to be alive. Yeah. Do you think this has anything to do with the emergency you called me to the bridge for? Huh? Oh, that. No, uh... The Admiral was saying that the only correct way to pronounce the new walker is ad at, but I think ATAT -AT is perfectly fine. I needed you to settle a bet. I can't believe I have to go to the council and tell them my life was saved because you're an idiot. I can't believe the Admiral would go to these lengths to stop you from settling our bet. I mean, he must really need those five credits. Their first thought was actually that this was intended to take out navigation. But looking into it reveals it's just too inefficient of an attack if that was their goal. So they deduced that Mace himself was indeed the target, and anything else was just collateral damage. That's Boba Fett's attitude when Aura tells him that the only other option now is to head to the reactor and see to it that it blows up the whole ship. Boba doesn't want to kill everybody, but right now it's the only way to get Mace. Only, he runs across a trooper who naturally assumes that this cadet is lost rather than the saboteur, because after all, he's a clone just like them. Except not just like them, but there's no way that he can know that just by looking at Boba Fett. That's why he lets the kid hold his gun when he asks for it, but Boba quickly turns on him. Although there is a moment's hesitation when the trooper's helmet is knocked off. The thing to remember is that it's hard to find closure when you lose someone you love very much, so imagine how much harder it is when there are countless billions who are all wearing their face and speaking in their voice. And so reminding him that this person, who looks exactly like the man that he is here to avenge, is not that man, naturally takes him a moment. But he puts the guy down, although with the stun setting. Not that it will matter once the ship blows up, of course. Ah! 
damn, usually I get to read them my poetry first. The Admiral tells the cadets to head to the escape pods by claiming it's a drill for them, but the reality is he knows the ship is going down. During the confusion, Boba hooks back up with them for his escape, but he sabotages the escape pod to ensure that it won't rendezvous with the rest of them. The rest all make their escapes as well, including Anakin and Mace, but not the Admiral, who insists he's going down with the ship, in the vain hope that maybe he can mitigate the crash. He says landing, but come on, nobody is that optimistic. Slave One hooks up with Boba's pod to rescue him, but part of that rescue is murdering all the witnesses, something that he doesn't really feel very good about, but he's not going to die with them, so he heads back on board. Luckily for the cadets, though, Slave One doesn't blow them out of the sky. It just leaves them there adrift and helpless and running out of air. It's, in fact, it's only the timely rescue of Mason Anakin that saves them from certain death. But the Jedi cruiser is still going down, and they're going to need to do something about that. And we'll see what it is they do with the next episode, R2 Come Home, in two weeks. All hail the Overlord! All hail the Overlord! You just wanted to show off. Hey, when I show off, it is instructive. And inspiring. For you, man.